Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now we've been talking about the manifestation of God's love and I'm just so blessed by the revelation that the Lord is bringing uh, through this message. And you know, it's one thing to share God's word. It's another thing to be blessed by what you're sharing. I feel so blessed. Because each time you talk about this, new light comes. And like, whoa, I, I thought I, I understood this, but there are still aspects of these that are just blowing my mind. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray that today, the Lord will minister grace and truth to your heart. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can we make request for our daily bread? Join me in faith. Release your faith. Praise. God. I've told you what that means. It means believe that what you are about to say will surely come to pass. Are you ready to do that? Join me now in agreement. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So we're looking at the life of Jacob. And we're looking at Jacob's life to show how the love of God is made evident or is made manifest in someone's life. So we shared how Jacob encountered God and his response to God. So God spoke to him. And that was God releasing love to him. And Jacob responded to God by making a covenant with God. And, and all what we, we talked about. Now, if you didn't listen to yesterday's message, please go. If I go listen from Monday, praise God, and get the full gist about this. So yesterday we stopped at, and I'll show you something from verse 21. When it says, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, Jacob said in the beeper, then shall the Lord be my God. Then shall the Lord be my God. So Jacob already had his mind set that this was going to define his life. Remember I was telling you yesterday, Jacob had options. He didn't take them. Why didn't he take them? Because of this statement. Then shall the Lord be my God. Jacob made up his mind. <laughs> he had a father. He had, yeah. he had a father that was great. You remember Isaac? The Bible says he became very great. And the feeling, a whole nation envied that man. So think about the influence that man had, Isaac. Now. Think about the influence of Abraham. Jacob wasn't going to use any of that, even though they exist. He was going to, I am He was going to prove God for himself. That's what he did. He say you will be the Lord shall be my God. Now it's not it's not he shall be the God of my father Abraham or the God of my father Isaac. No, he shall be my God. This is me and him, as though my fathers never existed. So everything that would have made him go back to his fathers. You know when the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children and people think it's house, land. So, so here you are thinking, hmm, a good man leaves an inheritance. So my father was not a good man. Every time, every, all he left for us was books and books and teachings and teachings and, and telling us advice and advice. Other parents are leaving houses for their children. My dad didn't even leave a single house. He paid rent until he died. In fact, we're the ones helping him to pay the rent. And you think your father didn't leave anything for you. If your parents were godly people, it's not houses and lands they will leave for you. It's not. If they leave, 
it's, that's not the inheritance. It's not. Believe me, it's not. What they will leave for you, truly, <laughs> is an inheritance, is, is, is a, an eternal inheritance, a spiritual one. First and foremost, when we as parents walk perfectly with the Lord, we naturally have left an inheritance for our children. Because you see that God we have walked with. He's a faithful God. But activities doesn't mean working for God. Oh yeah, you need to understand that. Running all over the world in the name of God doesn't mean you're working for God. There are certain decisions you will take in life. I'm speaking to every man. I'm speaking to every woman. There are certain decisions you will take in life that will prove that you're working for God. One of the important decisions you will take in life is the decision on who to marry. Now many men have fallen where this is concerned. You see, the moment you make that decision, a lot is defined about your life. People marry so casually, and that's why I need to share this with you. The moment you make a decision to get married, and the person you get married to will define the inheritance you're going to have in life. It will define it. No matter how good you are, no matter how anointed you are, no matter how sound you think you are, that is going to determine, I mean, the decision of a wife is going to determine where your life turns from that moment. The problem Esau had in life, because now we, we read about God's visitation to Jacob, but then there is no visitation for Esau. God never visited Esau. The Esau's problem in life was not the prophecy that was given when they were born. Esau's problem in life was not because Jacob took his uh, blessing or his birthright. No, sir. That was not a problem at all. It wasn't. Esau's problem was the day he took a decision for, the life, for his life partners. He married wrong. He married, into place, he married in places where God had strictly commanded that they must not marry from there. Now, God told them not to marry from there, not because uh, there were no good women. When I mean good women, women who can cook, who can take care of their husbands. Not that there was none. The, the reason God told them not to marry from there was because of the covenant. So the covenant carries the seed part in it. Every man God is making a covenant with, there is a seed part of that covenant. Now, if that seed part is not right, I'm sorry to tell you, that covenant will not stand. It won't. Because God is an eternal God. So he is making, when he makes a covenant with a man, he makes covenant with a man from the place of eternity to where the man is. So if God cannot see that you will meet him at eternity, then there is no basis, there is no reason for that covenant in the first place. So Esau, Esau wasn't a bad guy. No, he wasn't. And you know, I was sharing one time when I said, some people say, oh, Esau was a product of prophecy. No, sir. A prophecy was given when they were still in the womb. Yes. The prophecy never said Esau was going to be a mistake or Esau was going to be bad. No. 
If you actually look at that prophecy in the context of Jesus, you realize that it was a good prophecy. The elder one shall serve the younger one. How can you say that is good? Jesus said, the greater one amongst you, let him serve. So if you want to use Jesus' words to judge that prophecy, because Jesus' words is Christ. See that now? So God was actually saying that Esau will be the greater one. That's what God was saying. Two nations are in your womb. The elder one will serve the younger one. So God was actually saying, the elder one will be the greater one. But you see, like I said, because of wrong interpretation, we turn Esau bad. Oh, no, 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 no. The Bible says, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. God didn't say that when they were born. He didn't say that from their womb. He didn't. He only said the first one. Let's 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 look at it. So you verse twenty three, Genesis chapter twenty five, verse twenty two. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And this was Rebekah. She went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. That's all God said. How did we now interpret this to mean one is going to be good, one is going to be bad, one is going to be loved, one is going to be hated? He said two nations. So you're giving back to two nations. Probably, I use the word probably because the Lord have not told me this is exactly what happened. But when you read and you understand, you begin to wonder. So I said, probably Esau was affected by the negative energy that, were, that was given to him based on this prophecy because of lack of proper understanding. Not because God was wrong, not because God intends to be wrong, but he didn't understand. So he felt, oh, my younger brother had been favored. I say, I'll serve him. Jesus meant you will be greater. So you that is greater, show humility. You that is elder, show humility by serving your younger one. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When it comes to opportunities, think about this. God gave them the same opportunities. Now, Esau had commanded Jacob to go marry in his to go marry from his uncle's place. And the and J Jacob, sorry, was giving that command. And Esau heard when that command was given to Jacob. Even though he had married already, that was an opportunity for him to repair his life. He didn't take it. Rather than going to where he was, they were commanded, he went to the wrong place. So every choice Esau made for marriage was just wrong. And so wrong. You know, remember I told you earlier this week, David, it appeared one of the best decisions David made in his life was the choice to marry Bathsheba. Yeah. 
Because of, of all the wives he had, that seemed to be the one that carried the covenant. And how funny it is that she's the one that came through an adulterous affair. You see that now? So David had the opportunity to repair his life. Esau had an opportunity to repair his life. He heard his response was wrong. Oh, read the story. Genesis 28. Genesis 28. Let me show you this. Now watch this. Last one. Now, I believe this is for someone. Very important. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said to him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. And this was the same covenant Abraham walked with. And that's why he had to send his servant to go look for wife for Isaac, his son. Now, this is Isaac, his son, giving his son, Jacob, a command based on the promise of God that they were carrying. Covenants will direct your decisions. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 2. Arise, go to Pandarama, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. So they were aware Laban had daughters. See that now? It says, take a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy brother's mother. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people and give thee the blessing of Abraham. See, he was prophesying. Okay. And verse 5. Watch this. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Pandarama to Laban, son of Bethuel, the, the Syrian, and the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. Verse 6. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Pandarama to take him a wife from thence, and that he and as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. And that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Pandarama. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then Esau went unto Ishmael and took unto him wives. Did you just read that? Bad decision. And he was judged from the moment, see, the word of the Lord came through Isaac, their father. Jacob responded by going to the exact place. Esau responded by going to another place. Response. Whatever was in his heart, why he saw that the daughters of Canaan did not please his father. He didn't understand why. He could have asked. Jacob obeyed and went exactly to where his father commanded. Esau took a decision based on that instruction, but went in the wrong direction. Who do you blame? for the results they got. No, who do you blame? I told you, you see, now this, it was, you see, it was at this point. Now, this was an opportunity given. Now, he was already married. That's Esau. But this was an opportunity God was giving to him to repair his life. He heard the instruction. But his response was wrong. The love of God still, was still stretched to him. Now, if Esau had gone to Laban's house, 
Leah was there waiting for him. They would have chosen, okay, I'll choose Leah, you choose Rachel. So when God gives instruction, he's gone ahead of you. But you, are you willing? I say, I'm sharing this message with you because God is giving you an opportunity to start afresh. Oh, he will. He will give you an opportunity. And I pray that you will be wise and take hold of God's opportunity for you. May the Lord help you and give you understanding. Father, flood the heart of everyone watching and listening to me with perfect understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.